Uh, good morning and welcome to Northwest, a Unitarian Universalist congregation. I'm Tom Ott, my pronouns are he and him, and I'm going to be your worship associate for this morning's service. Uh, this morning we welcome back Pastor Joshua Berg, who is joining us from Southern California for our flower communion ceremony. If you're a visitor online and would like Northwest to stay in touch with you, please fill out the visitor form you will see in the chat box. And if you're here with us in person, you can fill out a visitor sign-in form in the atrium. So this is time, please greet your neighbors with a wave from wherever you are, uh, whether online or here in person. And there's the camera. <laughs> and then, and then before we begin the prelude, we'll take a deep breath and settle into a time for worship. Okay, well, this morning we were going to have a children's choir, but we are children at heart. <laughs> oh. Good, we have a child. <laughs> <laughs> We begin our service today with a land acknowledgement. We collectively acknowledge that Northwest Unitarian Universalist Church occupies the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands of the Anishinaabeg Three Fires Confederacy of Ojibwa, Odawa, and Potawatomi peoples. In particular, the congregation resides on land ceded in the 1807 Treaty of Detroit. We recognize, support, and advocate for the sovereignty of Michigan's 12 federally recognized Indian nations for historical community, uh, for historic indigenous communities in Michigan, for indigenous individuals and communities who live here now, and for those who are forcibly removed from their landmark, from their, la from their homelands. By offering this land acknowledgement, we pledge ourselves to justice and repair both with the land and its people. Okay. We light our chalice, the symbol of our faith, knowing this morning that many other Unitarian Universalist congregations across the land and around the world are doing the same. We light our chalice with words from Jennifer McLaughlin, 
who is a UU religious educator. As the first hint of green begins to peek through the barren ground, as the little sprig grows into a healthy stem, as the stem grows into a stalk and forms a bud, as that bud slowly opens with each new day to form a yellow daffodil. Let us be like that first hint of green, renewed by the warmth of the sun's rays and ready to emerge with new energy, ready to face the day. We light this chalice to bring a glimmer of that warmth into our space. Our first hymn is I've Got Peace Like a River, number 100 in Singing the Living Tradition. You're invited to rise in body or spirit as you are willing and able. Peace like a river. One purpose of a religious community is to encourage all who gather together to grow more generous in spirit and in action. This is the great end of all the world's faith traditions, to bring the human being closer to the divine by acts of creation and compassion. We now take an offering that allows us to exercise that all-important generosity of spirit, an offering that will mutually support the self-supported congregation and the shared plate recipient. The Social Justice Committee has selected Stand with Trans Michigan 
to share 50 percent of the plate collection in June. Stand with Trans, Mich Trans Michigan empowers and supports transgender youth and their loved ones. If you would like to donate, you can do so in a variety of ways that are now visible on your screen. And for those here in person, we will pass, pass a collection basket for checks and cash. Pastor Josh, excuse me. Thank you. Um, it's a delight being here. I, I just wanted to say, um, first of all, wish everyone who self-identifies as a father, happy Father's Day and love to all caregivers. Uh, and I also wanted to wish everyone a little premature uh, Juneteenth, happy Juneteenth celebration, which will be tomorrow. And I just wanted to say that because I want to make a request that when we celebrate Juneteenth tomorrow, we do a combination of celebrating and of learning and of teaching. Um, I ask you to, if you don't know about the holiday or you don't know the history of the holiday, um, take a little time to learn, take a little time to read about it, take a little time to talk about it with all the obstinate forgetting that this country is doing. Let's do, while we celebrate, some willful remembering. Thank you.
we wish you well from Prague, uh, from both the Prague Unitarian Church and from the International Unitarian Church in Prague. May God bless you and may you have a happy, happy Flower Communion. Conversation Amongst the Flowers by Reverend Kate Wilkinson. One day, two little girls stood side by side looking at the garden, which was in full bloom. Isn't it pretty, said the first little girl, with all the different colors? I don't see color, said the second girl, which is what her parents had taught her to say. This started up quite a conversation amongst the flowers, who spoke in their own quiet language to one another. That makes me want to cry, said the bleeding heart, who was full of feeling on the best of days. You always want to cry, said the iris, who was always so self-possessed, never shedding petals here and there like the apple blossoms, which grew above her. But it's so sad, the bleeding heart repeated, not to see color. Don't worry, said the flag, upright and direct as always. They're just pretending anyway when they say that. But why would they pretend such a thing, asked the peony indignantly. It would be such a shame not to see my beautiful magenta layers. Of all the flowers in the garden, she was the most showy. Because they were taught the wrong thing about this country, said the flag, who often spoke about the country's founding. They were told this place was a melting pot, that everyone should become the same. The sweetgrass, who had been here long before the founding of the country, swayed gently in the breeze and added, they didn't understand that this land is a garden, that we each add beauty with our own different colors and different shapes and sizes. Well, I certainly do, said the peony, ever confident. They forget, said the lupine, that we bloom in our own way and in different seasons to make the world more beautiful. But will they remember, said the nervous forget-me-not, always preoccupied with the questions of legacy. That's why we're here, remarked the daisy, who, though humble, knew the power of a simple gesture, having once been placed into the barrel of a gun to proclaim peace. That's why we're here, to remind them. The next hymn is number 305 in Singing Living Tradition, De Colores. You're invited to stand or rise and rise in body or spirit as you are willing and able.
Our reading today is My Sister of the White Flowers by Alice Walker. Every turn around the sun, every year on the date of my birth, no matter where I am, and usually it is the same place, wherever, wherever I can worship in sunshine, my gracious sister of the white flowers finds me. I look up from whatever wonder is holding me fast, and there is someone at my gate, they are holding a bouquet of white flowers, calla lilies, Frida's lily, as I think of them. It has been years since I saw my sister of the white flowers, and yet, oddly, in the vast world, she appears to be everywhere and at all times. But in my heart, she is always where last I saw her, down to earth, sounding like sister, sounding like mother, sounding like home. I thank you, sister of the white flowers. You have ascended like a star and few have missed your glow. We marvel seeing you. We think what grace and relentless energy the ancestors passed to us. You are so vast in scope, and yet here is something quiet, small, at my gate, fiercely grand in its own way, your faithful offering. You are my sister, beloved, and sacred to me, my sister of the white flowers, Wherever you may be, imagine your sister here, happily in solitude, lo loving you deeply, knowing your, our connection is eternal. Deeply bowing, though no one may observe me, bowing, smiling, recognition, savoring my joy. Good morning, Good morning, everybody. Oh, I hear myself echoing. I don't know if we can do that. If not, it's okay. All right. Oh, there we go. There we go. Good morning, everybody. Um, wore my flower shirt today. I saw a few people in the audience did as well. Um, welcome to our flower communion, flower ceremony, flower ritual. My homily today is going to be just a short homiletic poem followed by a video called The Hummingbird and the Flower, which I created. So this poem is called Ritualize Life. Ritualize life. Convey complex, abstract concept and wondrous imaginary allegory through words, through dance, through music, through art. Ritualize life. Honor cultural heritage increase generosity, communicate, survive, ritualize life, shift into sacred space, transcend, take control over risk, over fear, over sadness, over struggle, increase spiritual endurance, ritualize life, heritage and transformation, ancient and modern, inspired by traditions, build and change and expand and make new meaning and pass to future generations who will do the same. Ritualize life. Sing before a ball game. Start your day with a routine. Have dinner with the family. Walk the dog. Ritualize life. Speak to your philosophy. Practice morality. Connect with community. Make meaning. Guess what I'm going to say now? Everyone can say it with me. Ritualize life. Amen. And now here is <laughs> the hummingbird and the flower. Let me share my screen. Share sound, don't want to forget that, boom. Um, hmm. Hmm. Hold on. Updated my Zoom, so now all kinds of things are coming through. I'll turn my sound off. Uh, hopefully you can hear this. 
Only in the 90 degree angled bill, the rare white tipped sickle bill hummingbird of Costa Rica fits perfectly into the long, drooping, brightly colored flowering bloom of the Heliconia remonensis flower. No other hummingbird can successfully drink from its nectar. Did the flower evolve to fit the bird? The bird evolved to fit the flower. Or did they mutually evolve to fit each other? Today, we engage in a ritual of exchanging flowers that was imagined and first celebrated 100 years ago by Norbert Chopik and spread through the world, including to the United States, by Maya Chopik. Chopik chose flowers because he considered the flower divine. He wrote that the flower symbolizes each of us, every individual just as uniquely beautiful as every other. To Chopik, flowers also represented community. The flower communion ceremony demonstrates this idea that although we can select a flower or flowers, a person or a community of affiliation, we also give back to the greater bouquet. And what's more, collectively, we do not reject any flower within that greater community of communities bouquet. Rather, there must be respect, admiration, and indeed love for each and every flower, just as passionately. Chopik also maintained that symbols and rituals like the ones we are undertaking today are alive. They grow and change and must be regularly revisited with a heart to serve the greater divine love. That has been the case as Unitarianism and Unitarian Universalism remain in the process of evolution and transformation. The idea of community, for instance, represented for Chopik in the bouquet itself, is reimagined today more as the symbiotic relationship such as that of a flower and a pollinator. This relationship models a love that is interdependent, equitable, and generous. The flower needs the animal or the insect as much as they need the flower. And they accommodate each other perfectly, taking only what is needed just as freely as they give unselfishly that the other lives. None of us can exist without each other. <clears throat> we may not depend exclusively on a single soul, as do this hummingbird and this flower, but there is no doubt that we would fall were we not to recognize our interdependence with our actions in community. And that includes interdependence between every person, every living thing, and nature itself. This unconditional and necessary give and take is the pluralistic and the justice-oriented love without which we don't survive, let alone thrive. Continuing this tradition today of exchanging flowers that began 100 years ago is an acknowledgement that we mutually evolved and continue to evolve to fit each other. It is an acknowledgement that we each are not only the flowers that provide the nectar, but also the pollinators who return the love. All right, and now, if you will bear with us, we're going to try something. Um, since we have people online and in person, we're going to try to execute uh, the flower ceremony both online 
and in person at the same time, while at the same time singing a song uh, written by Amanda Udis Kessler, who also wrote uh, Go Out and Joy, uh, which our beloved Ken, Ken Hermanot directed for my ordination. Um, she wrote Bring a Flower. So the words will be up on the screen. Here's what's going to happen. In the sanctuary, um, I will ask each person in turn and start, maybe someone can, can lead the ritual and start, take turns, approach the communal collection of flowers at the front and do so quietly, do so reverently with a sense of how important it is for each of us to address our world and one another with gentleness and with justice and with love. And if you brought a flower today, when you approach, please place it with the rest and then select a different flower that particularly appeals to you. And as you take your chosen flower, and once again, if you didn't bring a flower today, please feel free to walk up and take a flower as well. Um, as you take your chosen flower, note its particular beauty, handle it carefully, be mindful of it. It represents the unique humanity of another as well as the respect for the interdependent web of existence, and it therefore deserves your kindest regard. Before we do that, before we start the music, I'm going to do a quick QR code on the screen. I'll share it in a second. And this is for people online, but people in the auditorium can also participate if you want. If you have a phone, you can scan the QR code. And in a moment, I'll put it up and I'll give you a few moments to scan it before we start. And then once you do, Follow the instructions on your phone to include a picture of a flower in our communal bouquet slideshow. If you don't have a picture of flower on your phone, feel free to take a moment, walk around your house, or if you can step outside for a second, take a picture of a flower. If you already have one on your phone or something else that represents uniqueness and beauty to you or the divine to you, you can share that if it's already on your phone. Um, if you do not or cannot participate in either way, Please contribute by sharing your spirit as a witness to everything that is just as important. So let me share the QR code first. We'll give it a few seconds. And then after people start joining, um, we'll, we'll start the music, bring a flower, and we'll start the flower ceremony in the sanctuary. So I'm going to share my screen. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This event, <laughs> the slides with app picks a random name for the event, and they're calling this one help <laughs> for some reason. So here is the QR code. I'll give it a few seconds. If you can't scan the QR code, you're also welcome to type in on your phone slideswith.com forward slash help. And we'll see how it works. So give it a few seconds for people to join. Um, and you'll see at the bottom of the screen as people join, uh, you can pick an avatar. When it, when you first scan the QR code, it will ask you to pick an avatar. There we go. Susie Kinnan joined. Ariana joined. Trina T Toko joined. Awesome. And I guess seven more can join, and that's it. We'll give it a second. Diana joined. Mary and Colleen. We did this last year because it was all online. So now we're trying in person and online. <laughs> We'll see how that goes. Alex joined. Amanda, Shell, Jake, and Hannah. Oh, I love your avatar. Yes, Alex, you can also make noises. <laughs> Lynn joined two more, and then we will begin. Um, I'll turn the slide to the next slide. You'll be able to, Sheree and Jason, and you'll be able to, one more can join. I'm sorry I didn't do this so more people can join. Uriah joined, wonderful. And now, flower ceremony sideshow. When I change the slide in a moment, and it, please give the app access to your phone, you'll then be asked to take a picture or use one already on your phone. I would ask that you take a picture of any flower. I already said all that stuff or use one on your phone. Um, so are you ready? I'm gonna turn it now. All right, take, we'll begin. Um, I'll turn the slide to the next slide. You'll be able to, Sheree and Jason, and you'll be able to, one more can join. I'm sorry I didn't do this so more people can join. Uriah joined. Wonderful. And now, flower ceremony sideshow. 
when I change the slide in a moment, and it, please give the app access to your phone, you'll then be asked to take a picture or use one already on your phone. I would ask that you take a picture of any flower. I already said all that stuff or use one on your phone. Um, so are you ready? I'm going to turn it now. All right. Take a photo with your camera or select one from your photo gallery. And at this time, I'm going to stop talking. And in the sanctuary, if we could, we can start the flower ceremony and start the music of Bring a Flower as we watch the flowers come on the screen. I'm going to play through the melody of Bring a Flower once, just so everyone has a chance to learn it. And, and the hamburgers are actually showing a picture of a flower on the screen, too. <laughs> Bring up. 
is come. Bring a flower, take a flower, there are flowers here for Josh, if you're talking to us, you're muted. We can't hear you. Thank you. May the beauty of these flowers, as well as the many stories they represent, remind us of the connection and the commitment we have to each other and to all of nature to thrive and to grow. The significance of the flower ceremony is that no two flowers are alike, just as no two people are alike. Yet each has a contribution to make. Together, the different flowers create a beautiful bouquet. Our common bouquet would not be the same without the unique addition of each individual flower. And thus it is with our church community. It would not be the same without each and every one of us. Amen. Our chalice extinguishing is by the Reverend Allie K.C. Bell. This beautiful flower on this beautiful tree has been given many names. Nothing, to, yeah, I wondered. Come, okay, you weren't coming up. Yes, I, wonder, I was waiting for you. Yes, all right. All right. <coughs> This beautiful flower on this beautiful tree has been given many names. Nothing that we call it can take away from what it is. Beautiful, natural, blooming. And so are you, beloved sibling. They may call us many names, but nothing can change who we are. Naturally occurring, beautiful, blooming. I am because you are. You are because I am. I love you. I need you to survive. Oh. Okay, we have a few announcements to share with you. Uh, more information about our events in the congregation are posted in the weekly newsletter and on our website, northwestuu.org. First of all, coffee, it says coffee hour, but it's actually a potluck. Uh, you're invited to join us for the potluck coffee and tea after the service in the multipurpose room. Next, the congregational meeting will be after the potluck We'll start the meeting at 12.30 p.m. Uh, the meeting will be multi-platform, so you will be able to attend the congregational meeting either in person or online via Zoom. Uh, we'll be providing updates as to our staffing for the coming year, uh, the financial status as we close out our current fiscal year and approve the budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, next, there's a dialogue on race and ethnicity uh, this is a monthly gathering to have a dialogue on race and ethnicity on the third Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., which is this week on June 21st. This month's discussion will be facilitated, facilitated by Mary Mueller and Cheryl Goldberg. We will be exploring the history and meaning of the Juneteenth holiday. And you can bring a friend.
as a quiet little seedling lay within its darksome bed. To itself it fell a talking, and this is what it said. I am not so very robust, but I can do the best I can. And the seedling from that moment, its work of life began. Will you walk with me? Will you talk with me? Will you tell me that I'm not alone? The joy we share as we wait there, none of So the seedling pushed a little leaflet up into the light of day to examine the surroundings and show the rest the way. The leaflet liked the prospect, so it called its brother Stim. Then two other leaflets heard it and quickly followed them. To be sure, the haste and hurry made the seed seedling sweat and pant. And almost before it knew it, it found itself a plant. Will you walk with me? Will you talk with me? Will you tell me that I'm not alone? The joy we share as we The sunshine poured upon it, and the clouds they gave a shower, and the little plant kept growing till it found itself a flower. So good folks, be like the seedling, always do the best you can. Every person must share life's labor just as well as everyone can. And the sun and the showers will help you through the lonesome struggling hours till you raise to light and beauty, virtues fair, unfading flowers. Will you walk with me? Will you talk with me? Will you tell me that I'm not alone? The joy we share as we